guys, Julian here. As you can see, I'm working on the background, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make 1605 style techno like Space 92. We're going to be talking about that style he's been releasing for a few months now, sort of like his new EP on 1605 as well. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because it's already available. Thanks for the support, guys, and let's dive in. Alright, so, this is the full template that you heard in the intro. You can see we have our build up here, and then we also have sort of like the drop. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just go down each element here, but as I'm doing that, I'm going to be breaking down how everything works and kind of the overall arrangement, not just... You know, here's how you make a kick, but here's how you make a kick, and then make that work throughout the track. So, speaking of kicks, the first thing we have up here is the kick. And so the way this kick is made is it's actually four layers. We have a main kick. So this is just like a big fat kick that I've made. We have a rumble. Which is being made using that exact same kick. It's the same MIDI and everything, but what's happening is you can see we have some effects on it. So starting off, we actually have an arpeggiator here. Oh yeah, that's just making it go doom 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 doom. So we get kind of like a nice driving rhythm here. And then we make a rumble with it where I've got a reverb going into this amp here. And then some more drum bus as well. And then I have this auto filter. So here's without that. And then with it. So obviously, yeah, that's how you create the rumble. And then we just have a utility converting it to mono once more. Just to make sure. And then I have this, which is just cutting out everything below 20 hertz. Just cutting out the frequencies that we aren't really going to be able to hear. But that are going to mess up the bass line if we don't touch them. And then finally, I just have this auto pan here, which is making it bounce off of the kick. And then for the other two layers, we have this high kick. And then this one on top of it, which is more in the mid-range. You can see that first one is just a sample that I high-passed, just one of my kicks. But then this one, you also see with that one, I made sure to line up the transient. Very important. But then with this one, you can see it's like this distorting kick, where I'm basically just cutting out the low end, distorting just the mids and highs. And then I have this EQ here to cut out the low end again, just to make sure that there's nothing from that. So that's the four layers for the main kick. You'll see, very clean. Nothing really too crazy in terms of processing. This original, like the... This kick isn't even processed. So it's just like a nice fat kick. And then together. And then I also have a high pass on here, which you can see automates up at a few different times. And then underneath that, we have this bass groove. So it's a very popular type of bass in techno right now. It works really well for the style. And there's a lot of different ways that you can make these. The way that I made this one here, it's using two instances of wavetable. And what's happening is they're actually kind of the same patch. It just has different oscillators in there. And then if you look in here, you can see in the MIDI, I have the filter frequency and the oscillator position mapped to the velocity. Same thing here. So then what's happening is we're creating a groove by just doing constant 16th notes. And then now all we have to do is just change some of these velocities and you can change the pattern. And you can... You can really do a lot with this. Like, you can make, like... Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can do just playing with those velocities there. So I really recommend that you try making a bass like this. Like, make something that has a lot of ways that it can be moved around, and then just map those to the velocity, and then you can create this really interesting groove. Just because certain notes are going to be a little bit louder. And more open and all that kind of stuff. Versus just having it go da -da 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 -da, all with the same velocity would be kind of boring. For the sound here, so like I said, it's these two wavetable patches. So the first one, we have Menace and Clip Sweep, these two wavetables. Just going into a low pass filter with a bit of an envelope on it. And then the envelope is, uh, there's an envelope also on the positions. And then same deal with this one. But this one's a bit wider because we have this unison arm. And then in terms of processing, you know, it's going to be really simple. And this is something I want to highlight also here, which is like, 
you know, not just making a sound that's kind of okay, and then putting a bunch of saturation and compression on it, but making a sound like this, that's just a cool sound that you just want to hear in the track because of what it is, and then letting that just kind of rock, rather than, again, making something that's all right, and then having to add so much saturation and compression and stuff like that to it. This is just a good sound. All we need is just to make it kind of fit under the kick with that auto pan. And then this EQ here, because you don't really want this to be like your low end. Like it's a bass, but it's really more in the mid range. Then we have the build up kick. So it's that same kick, just going through a high pass filter and a low pass filter, which actually the automation is just on the low pass filter, you can see. It brings it in there, you know, kind of a nice way to have the kick in the break and keep that rhythm going. That doom doom constantly. But obviously not just having like the full main kick. And then we have this main hi-hat, which is made up of three layers. So you can see we have this one, which is pretty punchy. That Valhalla room isn't doing anything, you can ignore that. We have this one, which is more so in the mid-range. And then this one, which is actually a hi-hat from one of my sample packs, but it has a bit of reverb on it. And then you can hear when you play those together, you get this one really fat hi-hat. So this is the idea here, is like layering these rather than going and, you know, just having one and saturating it to hell. It's like, you know, we just have one that's really punchy, one that's got that nice, like, to it, and then one that kind of gives us a little bit more punch, but also, like, some space. And then when you put them together... That's the idea. You don't have to have any processing on any of these. Again, like, that's not doing anything. There's a little low-pass filter there, which I believe is automating. Yeah, it's just automating in the break to kind of bring this layer in. But other than that, you know, it's just three solid hi-hats, and they're going to sit nicely side by side. Then we have our shakers. And the way that I'm making this is there's this one steady shaker. And then we have these two kind of bouncing around it. So what these are doing is it's like constantly... You're constantly playing around those eighth notes there, so this is just all the sixteenth notes. But then what's happening is it's two different sounds and they're kind of close, but not exactly the same. And then when you jump between them like this, like just have this one pattern but it's being played across two notes, or two sounds. You can hear it just creates a more interesting hi-hat groove there, because like one's going to be slightly louder. You know, they're going to be a little bit different texturally. It's going to make it a lot more interesting than if you just have one going... And then you combine that with this nice shaker loop underneath it. And there we go, that's really all you need. And so then we have on here just this EQ8, and actually I'm going to delete that auto filter. You can see it wasn't really doing anything. Oh yeah, then we have this build percussion. And this is pretty simple. It's actually just this drum rack of a bunch of different percussion sounds just playing like this little groove. And then we also have this percussion. That just hits on the one every two bars. But what this adds is something really important to the build up because we want some kind of texture in there. Like if you just have like the synth. It's not very textured because it's just like a lot of saw waves and square waves and stuff. But to add something like this in, just gives you that nice, like I said, like kind of background texture loop in there. So that's what this works really well for. And you can see we have a low pass filter which stays there. It's also got an LFO on it, so it's moving around. And then it automates down there to kind of make this disappear right before the drop because you don't want this to really be like full force right in this little pause here. You want it to kind of like disappear a little bit first. Then we just have some grain away. Then eighth notes, you can see that's what creates that like kind of nice background warbly thing. We have a bit of drum bus as well, which is just making this all a bit punchier and fatter and making it more textured. And then finally just a high pass filter. And then we have the ride. Which is a pretty standard techno ride. The main thing to notice here 
is I have a high pass filter and I also have my ultimate stereo widening rack on this. And really the main thing about this is just making sure that it's not just right down the middle. Because you can hear like if we play out the hi-hats with this. This is without the widening. And then with it. You can hear it just puts the ride in a different place in the mix. So it's not fighting for space with these hi-hats and shakers. You can just kind of have it play in there on its own. Then we have like this little snare which just plays some fills. You know, really subtle background element, but it really brings the track to life. Then we have this bass pluck that you hear throughout the track. So that's just playing this pretty simple pattern, you know, it's just one note. And the way that this sound is being made is it's three layers. So you'll see like when you're doing these, you know, you don't always want to just grab like one synth and just kind of like call it a day of that like a lot of times these layers are what's going to make the sound because we're not really doing too much like saturation or stuff like that to try to make the sound fatter but you're really not going to just get that huge fat bass stab like you hear in these tracks just using one synth trust me i've tried it a million times you really need to like start layering stuff and not just layering synths but finding like three or four different wavetables that are all doing different things and then layering those on top of each other and so you can see that's kind of what we're doing here. We have like this noise manipulator and this transformations. We're also automating the filter frequency there to just open up. You know, it kind of makes it more dynamic. And then we have, as you can imagine, an envelope on everything. I also have an envelope on the pitch as well, just making it kind of a bit more plucky. Then for this one, it's just this freak wave table, which for some reason you can't see it right now, but... You see, that one's a bit higher, so this on its own really wouldn't be much, but now if you combine that with... You can hear it makes it really fat. And that's also going into a low-pass filter with a bit of an envelope on it and that same pitch envelope just to make it a bit more punchy. And then the last layer here is analog. Just adding that kind of nice, like, crunchy saw wave thing underneath. And so this is just two, a saw wave and a square wave. Going into a low-pass filter with a little envelope on it. And then that's it for that one. That's just it. That's just making it sound a bit kind of more full in that range. And if I turn that off and then play the whole thing with it, it's really subtle, but just having that little, like, <laughs> underneath everything works really well to make it fat. And then on the group of those... We have just a bit of echo, just doing 16th notes, a high pass filter, and then this auto pan, which just makes it sound like it's being side chained to the kick. And then we have the first lead. So this is, we're in the key of E minor, so we're just using actually a pretty basic E minor kind of scale here. You can see like, we have E, the root note, A, the fourth, C, the sixth, G, which would be the minor 7th. Another E, or the minor 3rd, excuse me. Another E. C, so again, just using the 6th. We have a 5th up here, and then back down to the root note. So if you look at these, it's all just that same basic minor techno scale, like... Those notes that I just added there, it's all just within that scale, which is a very basic minor scale, but then just kind of like, you know, it's all about like exploring that and seeing what you can do with it. Like seeing how you can make a catchy melody a lot more unique in that style. You know, you don't want to just do like anything too basic, but just really getting creative with the same notes. So for this one, what we're doing is, you can see it's a little bit crazy with the plus 12 minus 36 there but what's happening is we have two saw waves or excuse me a saw wave and a pulse wave inside a wave table here so you can hear that pulse wave really gives it kind of more nice mid-ranging texture we have the low pass filter which doesn't have any envelope or anything you can see we're just automating that to come up in the break and then back down right as the buildup ends there because again, we want this to kind of disappear and then when it comes back to the drop again and it's all the way up, it's going to be a lot more effective that way. We also just have this unison set to the classic mode. Then I have this amp on here and so what this is doing is it's adding some texture into the sound. Here's without it. 
I'm with it. You can see we're using a tiny bit of it because I just have the dry wet at 13%. This is a great way to make a scent a lot fatter. The key here, again, is just using the dry wet. You want it to be like a layer rather than like just having it 100% wet and then all of a sudden it's taking over your sound. You just want that crispy sounding thing but has a little layer in the background. And then we have some echo just doing corner notes to give it some space. You notice I don't do echo and reverb. Just echo is good. Then I have this auto pan which comes on in the drop to make it sound side chain to the cake. And then there's this low pass filter which I used at the end to just bring it down. Again, we're constantly moving this. You know, it's opening and closing in the break. And then toward the end of this main drop here where we would now like maybe here would be the outro. It's just kind of disappearing. Then we have the second lead. So same thing using that same scale. This one's a bit simpler because we're just really using E and then the sixth and the fifth and then that's another E up there. So for this one, it's made with wavetable as well. Two stop waves. You can see the second one is an octave up. And then we have a low pass filter which is being automated to kind of bring this to life. Yeah, you don't want it to just sit in the same place. Like having that little movement does a lot for this in terms of keeping it exciting throughout the track. And then yeah, we just have a bit of unison there. You can see I have this amp on here. It's the same deal as that last one where we're just using it as a layer. Because obviously we wouldn't want that to be the whole thing, but that works really well as a layer. Then we just have some drum bus to kind of tie it together even more. And this auto pan, which again simulates side chaining it to the kick. And then we just have a high pass filter and then this EQ here boosting the high end. And then we have this art. So for the mini here, what this is doing is we're kind of taking... It's just constantly going dun 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 between that A and E. So the fourth and the root note. And then we're using just these extra 16th notes up here. That's sort of like the melody. So we're going the ninth. The, or excuse me, the fourth, the sixth, and then the fifth, and then back down to the root note again. So like, yeah, just kind of getting creative with that. But if you start with that dun 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 dun, and then just throw these notes in on top, you can actually kind of get a lot more interesting result that way. I recommend playing with it. Now, for the sound, this is made with wavetable. It's a square wave and a saw wave. I'm just going into a low pass filter which has lots of automation. You can see all throughout the track, it's constantly moving. And then we also have an envelope on that filter frequency so that you're getting more of a pluck. And then I have the noise unison. And then after the synth, we just have a bit of echo. You can see it's on the ping pong setting. I have a high pass filter, which just cuts out the lows. And this auto pan for the drop to make it sound side chain. And then we have a low pass filter, which just brings it in even more to like, because if we turn that off, so you still get a little bit of high on there. So that's just kind of for the break to make it a little bit more cloudy. Then we just have this little vocal sample. We are, we are. Yeah, just kind of a cool thing right before the drop. It's kind of like a hook. We are, we are. I think having something like that makes your track a lot more memorable. And all I've got for processing on this is just a bit of OTT. We are, we are, we are. Which you can hear, it just makes it a bit crisper and more full sounding and kind of repairs that high end. Then we just have an echo doing quarter notes, a bit of drum bus, which is beefing it up even more. And then finally, just a high pass filter, which is just cutting out the lows and making sure that this isn't going to get in the way of anything else. And then the last synth that we have here is this break, or actually the second to last synth that we have here is this break bass. So if you look at this, it's actually following the same notes that the ARP was doing. It's just those top notes. I just took that, and then that's what the bass is playing. So, you know, rather than having, like, an extra part here that you have to then go, and, like, it's going to be kind of messy because it's not going to be playing the same thing as ARP, this way, the whole track just feels really good and together because they're all kind of playing that same note. And that just sounds really good with the ARP, though. So for the sound on this one, it's a pretty standard sort of like big re-space. We just have two saw waves here, detuned a bit. 
and then just a bit of unison, and that's really it for inside a wavetable. And then we just have some drum bus. I have a low pass filter, which brings this in through the drop or through the break, as you can see. And then we have this utility here, which is turning the volume down a little bit. But also, I've got the bass mono turned on there, so that we just have that like anything below 186 hertz is in mono, just to make sure. And just like our low lows will be mono. And then finally, this EQ is not doing anything. But we have this high pass filter, and this is good for right before the drop. You don't usually want to have your like full low end there. Instead, what you want to do is kind of make it disappear. So then, when we get to the drop, it's a lot more impactful. Like this, going into that, it's a lot more impactful than this. You can see what I mean. Like having that bass right before the drop just feels a little bit weird. So that's what that's doing. And then the real last synth here is this drone. And so that's just a nice high note that's playing through the break there. It's just playing E, the root note. And this is made with Operator. So I haven't done this technique in a minute, but we're using FM synthesis and sine waves in particular. It's a very simple technique, but we're using it to create this interesting kind of more textured drone. Because if you just use saw waves and square waves over and over, you know, it can get a bit boring, especially from these more like ambient sounds. So using FM synthesis, we can just take four sine waves here, you can see. They're all at different octaves. One's detuned a little bit. And then in doing that, it just creates this more interesting kind of texture there. And then if we had just taken like a sine wave or a triangle or a square wave or a saw wave. So I recommend playing around with this. You can see I also have an LFO on the volume of oscillator B. So that's what's giving it that kind of like movement. That and the detune combined. And then we just have some chorus and some reverb. I have a low pass filter which just makes this kind of disappear. As the break goes on and then it brings it in for this part. We have a high pass filter as well which is just automating up here. To kind of make this like disappear. And then the last thing is just this auto pan, which just comes on from the drop. And then the last stuff down here is really just like the effects. Like we have a nice building snare. We have a clap underneath that as well, which has some automation. You can see it's like automating. That echo to come up. And it's a little subtle thing, but just having that clap on top of the snare in the build up you can hear it makes that build up a lot more impactful we have like a nice white noise build and drop as well then these foley percussions we're just kind of sit in the background you can see those are just going through like this low pass filter with an LFO to give them some movement I have an echo on there another low pass filter which is just to cut out the high frequencies to make sure like when this one goes up sometimes, it was letting through a little bit too much highs. So I just have that to cut that. And then just a low or a high pass filter to make sure it's not going to get in the way. But anything else? And yeah, that's just adding some of those little like background sounds. You may not always notice these when you hear the track, but you are noticing them on a subconscious level. And if you don't have them, it'll be really noticeable. So. Yeah, and then we just have like this little thing. Just one of my effects. And then this little sweep right before the drop as well. We are, we are. That's just really nicely underneath that vocal. And yeah, so. That was going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description. It's a really great way to support me. If you guys are enjoying these videos, it really helps keep me going so I can keep bringing you guys new videos every day. And yeah, thank you so much everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.